New Orleans is having a tough time right now, even for a place that's always had a rough side. 25% of the city's residents live in poverty. That's one of the highest rates in the country for a major city. Crime was always high there, but now it has exploded. In the first six months of this year, 365 people have been shot. It's a 55% increase over a year ago. There have been almost 100 murders, putting New Orleans in contention with Baltimore and St. Louis for the title of America's most deadly city. Even more frightening, according to the New Orleans Police Department, only about 37% of the city's murders are even solved. You can be gunned down at random while walking through the French Quarter, and there's nearly a two-thirds chance your killer will never be found. Don't worry, though. Mayor Mitch Landrieu knows what he has to do to save his city, and it's obvious, if you think about it, fix global warming. In his State of the City address on Thursday, Landrieu announced an ambitious plan for the city of New Orleans to increase recycling, cut carbon emissions, and massively increase its solar energy output, all to stand in contrast with the Trump administration, which has recently pulled out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Now, between this and tearing down all those statues in the city, it is shocking that Mayor Landrieu just can't seem to get a handle on the city's crime problem, which is the single biggest problem. For some reason, focusing on superficial issues popular with the coastal elite doesn't seem to be helping. Call a think tank and find out why. The president has pushed for restricting immigration into the United States, focusing on the alleged economic, criminal, and cultural problems caused by heavy immigration here. But those aren't the only reasons you might oppose mass immigration. What about the classic liberal cause of protecting the environment? Phil Cafaro is a philosophy professor at Colorado State University. He's the author of the book, How Many is Too Many? The Progressive Argument for Reducing Immigration into the United States. Professor Cafaro joins us tonight. Professor, thanks for coming on. Good to be with you, Tucker. It seems I, I, I was looking for you for a year. Because when I was a kid, there were liberals and sincere liberals, progressives, who said, you know, I'm not against immigrants or anything, but too many people is bad for the environment. It seemed an obvious point. I can't find anybody on the left who says that other than you. What's your argument? Well, the argument is relatively straightforward, Tucker. Uh, immigration currently is driving U.S. population growth. And population growth is a big part of many of our environmental problems in the United States. So part of the progressive argument has to do with, with that. Uh, if you care about creating a sustainable uh, environment, you need to look at immigration-driven population growth. Yeah, because you don't go to midtown Manhattan for nature. You go to Yellowstone because there are fewer people there. I mean, it's, it seems an obvious point. So why isn't the Sierra Club and the NRDC pushing for reductions in immigration? Well, I mean, years ago, if you go back to the 70s and even into the 1980s, uh, the Sierra Club did have a policy that uh, the U.S. should reduce immigration to levels that would stabilize the U.S. population. Uh, but over time, uh, that got to be a harder and harder argument to make for complex reasons. And uh, really starting about 20 years ago, uh, environmental leaders dropped the ball on population. So there are quite a few of us, though, who still believe it's an important component of, of sustainability, and we're trying to make that case. Crowded countries are dirty, all of them. Um, it's obvious if you travel. So w what does our population look like if current trends continue, say, 100 years from now? What will the effects on the environment be and the population be? Well, currently our population is 326 million people in the United States. And if we keep immigration levels where they are, we're on track to add 200 million more people by 2100. So that would put us at about 525 million people. Uh, on the other hand, if we reduced immigration wait, wait, wait. levels we're, to wait, what they wait, were... Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Can, can sure. I stop you right there? We're, we're on track to, add, to be to 500 million by the end of, of, of when? In how long? Uh, by 20, by, by 2100. The the... So many, many people by the end of this listening century? to this show. By the end of this century, that's right. And most of that population growth is driven by immigration. If we could simply cut back to the levels of immigration we had uh, 50 years ago, we'd be on track to stabilize our population in a few decades. So basically what's happened is the American people have chosen to stabilize our population. We're having about enough children to replace ourselves. But Congress has increased immigration in recent decades, 
And so we're on track to add hundreds of millions of more people. And of course, that has a pretty large environmental impact, whether you're talking about greenhouse gas emissions, yeah. sprawl, um, loss of wildlife habitat. People make a difference. 500 million people by the end of this century. So if you're watching, your children will live in a country with 500 million people. That's a remarkable number. Uh, Professor, I hope you'll come back. I'm sure you take a lot of crap for saying stuff like that on the left, but good for you for doing it anyway. I appreciate Thanks. the opportunity to come on. Thanks. Anytime.